You may have seen skeleton loading components with animation when you visited other web pages. Let's look at how you can add skeleton loading components to your web app. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we'll add skeleton loading components with animation to an example web app. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. When we request data with our web app, we often show a simple loading message or loading spinner like the message you see right here, and that indicates to the user our app is working to retrieve the data. However, you may have seen some sites use skeleton loading components, and you can see an example of those right here. They're usually animated, like you see these pulsing, and that indicates the data is being loaded to the user as well. And they're definitely a step up from that loading message or spinner like we have back here. Today's starter code is in React, but if you're just interested in the CSS, you can easily take that info away from this video and apply it to a project in Vanilla.js or any other framework or library you prefer. And I'm not going to review the example app, but for those of you that are interested in how it was built or want to convert it to TypeScript for practice, all of the code for the example will be available at the link in the description. So I'm open to the package JSON right here, and let's just open a terminal window, and we need to start JSON server. You can see I've got a data folder up here, and in the db.json file, I've got both posts and users, and we will be requesting both of those. So I'm going to say npx, and then I'm going to put json-server, and then a dash w for watch. We're going to watch the data folder and look at the db.json file, then dash p and port 3500. This should start up our dev server for our JSON, which really kind of just imitates a REST API server that we would request data from. And you can see we've got both posts and users available here. Now, besides that, we could go ahead and start our app as well because I have most of it together. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that terminal window again and do another plus here. So I have two windows, two bash windows, and I can type npm run dev. This is a project I started with Vt. So I'm using npm run dev as we can see our scripts up here and they have dev Vt. So press enter and it will go ahead and start this project up for us as well. And then I can just click on this link while I hold down the control key and it will launch the project. And here we see it, I'll close out of those other windows that I had. And right now we have the boring loading message here and we did load in the employees. I'm going to reload and you'll see a loading message here at first, just so you know that is working with JSON server. And I built a delay in, so there's almost a two second delay into loading the employees. There's also about a two second delay into loading the posts when we do load those. So that will allow us to see the skeletons that we create a little bit longer. Back in VS Code, let's open up our source directory. And inside of the source directory, let's open up the components directory. Now in the components directory, we can see a few components that we have, a header, a nav, a post list, and a post component. But let's create a new directory inside of here, and let's call it skeletons. And then inside of the skeletons directory, we're going to create three files. Let's start with the first one, and it's going to be skeleton.css. Now let's create a skeleton class, and this will apply to all of the skeleton components that we create. And so we'll start with a background, and here let's, let's call this background color actually, and let's set this to RGB, and this one's easy to remember. It's 199, 199, 199. And then after we do that, of course, I need a semicolon here and then a margin. And let's keep these relative. So if the user changes their font size, it will also change the size that we're applying to our skeleton components, just like it would the regular components. So this would be 0.75 REM and zero for left and right. Of course, that 0.75 was for the top and bottom. Then a border radius and let's say 0.25 rem on that. Okay, so that applies to all skeleton components. But now you'll see what we can do. We can create titles, we can create lines of text, we can create profile pictures, just about anything that we would want to feature a skeleton of. So here, first I'm going to start with skeleton again because we only want this to apply if the skeleton class is applied. Then I'll say dot title 
And here I'm going to have a height and I'll say 1.25 rem, so a little bit bigger. And then margin dash bottom, let's give this one rem. And then let's go ahead and create some text. So we'll say dot skeleton dot text. And inside of this would just be what we would set for a line of text that would be different. We only need a height and 0 0.75 rem. Okay, so we have a title and text. Now we can of course create these kind of in smaller components, things that we would apply, kind of like if you're familiar with Tailwind CSS, we'll just create these small classes and apply them. So now let's have a dot skeleton dot width, and I'm going to go ahead and add something else here, like a dash 100 to indicate that this class is going to be 100%. So I could copy this down with shift alt and the down arrow and just make a couple of changes here. I did not mean to delete that last cur that ending curly brace. Let me fix that. Okay, after that, let's change this 100. So I'll select the first one, control D to select the next and change it to 50. So now I also have a class with a width dash 50 to apply to the skeleton. Now, if we were going to create other things, this is actually all I'll need today for the post, but if we were going to create something else, like say a image or a profile circle, something like that, we could create smaller skeleton classes for those too. So I'll say skeleton and then dash profile dash circle, for example. And then here, maybe it would be width of 150 pixels, height of 150 pixels, and we would give it a radius, or I'm sorry, a border radius of 50%, and that would make it a circle. So that's just an example. I'm not going to use this one today, but I'll leave it in here. Okay, now that we've done that, we also wanna add that pulsing, that animation. And if you're familiar with CSS animations, which I do cover those in my CSS series or my CSS video, uh, we need keyframes for that to animate, so I'm going to ahead I'm going to say animation here first and I'm going to say at keyframes and then I'm going to call this pulse because that's what those lines that you saw in that skeleton component earlier do and then here we're just going to say 50% and inside of this it's an opacity and it's essentially 50% as well now full disclosure here this animation I'm creating is the exact animation that you see for a class named Animate Pulse that is in Tailwind CSS. So if you're using Tailwind, just apply this class as it already exists. It's called Animate-Pulse, but we're recreating it here. So we've got animation, and then of course we need to name the animation, it's Pulse, we'll say two seconds. And now this has this cubic, let's see, if I can just put this in, and then I'm going to put the numbers here, 0 0.4, 0, 0 0.6 and 1 and then we say it's an infinite loop infinite there we go and save so that's all of the css we need today and if i even added a little extra css here for an example profile circle that we won't use but maybe you would want to if you were creating a skeleton profile or something like that as well now let's create the next file that we need over here so create a new file and this is just going to be skeleton.jsx Inside of this, we need to import the skeleton CSS we just created. So it's at dot slash skeleton dot CSS. After that, I'm going to type RAFCE with my ES7 React snippets and press tab. And I quickly get a functional component. This component is going to receive a prop and I'm going to call it classes. After we get classes, I'm going to create a variable just so this is easy to follow along and we're not sticking a long string possibly inside of what we return so here i'm going to call this class names notice we have an attribute in react where we could apply it to elements and that would be class name not plural but i'll call this class names and then i'll set this equal to a template literal string so it starts with a back tick I'm going to apply the skeleton class as it will apply to all skeleton components. Then I'm going to go ahead and put in the classes that we receive as props. Then I'm going to put in animate-pulse to go ahead and finish that out. And that's all we need for that value. 
Then we're going to return, and here, I'll just get rid of those extra lines, we're going to return a div, and then we could give this a class name, but really it's going to have a value. So let me just put div, and then here I'll say class name equals curly braces, pass in the class names. There we go, class names. And we can just leave this empty right here because what we're doing, we're going to have that blank skeleton. So it'll be the gray line or a gray circle or whatever we would be passing in, what we wanted this basic generic kind of component to be. And really that's all there is to this component. Now we need one more and you would need one for kind of each type of parent component you are going to create. We have posts in our example app. So I'm going to create a skeleton post.jsx. Here I'm going to import the skeleton that we just created. And after we get that, I'll go ahead and create this component with RAFCE as well. Now that I have the skeleton post, it's not receiving any props. So let's just look at what we're going to return here. It will be a div. So I'm going to go ahead and put a line in between. Let's give this a class name equal to post. I already have a post class in my CSS here for the index.css file. If I scroll down far enough, here's our post class. So that will be applied already. So once I've got that here, I'm back in the skeleton post JSX. We know we're creating a post here, but a div is fine because this is generic. You could make this an article just like I did for my other posts, but a div would be fine because we're not really adding any content anyway. Now that we have the skeleton imported, we can go ahead and use the skeleton. And remember it receives classes as a prop. Now I'm going to make the first one a title. I'm also going to give it a width dash 50. And after that, I can close that out. Now let me copy this down, but this one's going to be different. It will be text and the width will be 100. Now I'm going to copy two more of those down. So our skeleton here will basically have a 50% width title and then three lines of text. And now that we've completed our skeleton post, let's go to the posts list and import that and use it inside of the component. So after post, I'm going to import skeleton post. And now that I've got that, I can use it down below. So where we have our boring loading message, instead we can put our skeleton post and see how that looks. So I'll have a skeleton post right there. Close that out and save and it's ready to go. So let me drag the code over to the left. Now I will come back to our app right here that is running and we have one component that it looks great. It's pulsing, that's fine, but we only have one. So we need to fix that. So let's go back to the code quickly. And I'll drag this back to full screen just so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing. Notice I've commented out part of the if statement. The current user state, if that's equal to zero, that means the employee's name is showing in the drop menu and no employee has been selected. So I just moved it down here so we would always see the skeleton post or the loading state for now. When we're finished, I will uncomment this. And of course, we'll only see it when we're actually loading data. So really we just need to determine how many of these we want. And I'm going to use some parentheses so we can put this on separate lines. We'll have just a little bit more code logic here. So save to get the formatting. So for what we want, we need to create an array first. And I'm going to do that with brackets. Inside this array, I'm going to spread an array and then I'm going to give it 10 elements and then dot keys. And from there, I'm going to map over what we have inside the array, which would be the 10 keys. So I'll say dot app, and then I'm going to just use I for the iterator here and an arrow. Let's put a curly brace and break this down to the next line. And then I'll tab in and we'll return the skeleton post inside of map. And let's put a curly brace after as well. And of course the closing parentheses. But what we also need to do since we're mapping over is we need to provide a key. And we can just use that same I that we created as one of the keys in the array as we map over that for our key there. And now if we save and we go back and look, we should have 10 of these now. So now we have a nice full screen with 10 skeleton posts. 
and everything looks like it should. We could even go in and since I need to drag this back over, but we could even go into the index CSS and I have my dark mode set as a preference so I could uncomment that and we can see what it looks like in light mode as well because it will apply both if you're using CSS variables as I've also shown in my CSS course how you can do that and you essentially let the user choose their preference for their computer whether it's light or dark so right now I'll comment this out and save and we'll drag this back and we'll look at the light mode and see how it looks as well yep it's brighter for sure but these are still pulsing it still looks like a good loading state so I'll take this back once again and let's uncomment this so just control Z to undo that back in the post list let's fix this part right here where I had it where we were always seeing the loading state I'll remove the current user out of this portion of the if statement and then I will uncomment these lines and then we just need to move all of this back to where it's an if or an else if there we go save and now what we should see first is something saying select an employee to view the posts now when we select an employee we get our loading state and we wait as it loads remember I built in that delay and then we get our posts and that's great just a quick note I'll select another employee and it will do the same thing but if I go back to an employee I've already selected since I used SWR in this app that's stale while revalidate we won't see those loading uh, components again those skeleton components when I select an employee we already looked at and if I reload the entire page we will so it loads the employees again and that's a good indication you've reloaded the full page now I'll choose the first employee we see the skeleton components and then we get the data I do it for the next one we see the skeleton components and you will for each one you select but if you ever go back to an employee you've already selected you should just get the data right away and that's part of the SWR hook that I'm using in this example app well I hope that has helped you learn how to create some skeleton components for any app you're creating react or otherwise Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.